let's assume that uh, uh, you are given an opportunity to, as a, a top economist yourself, uh, an opportunity to, to meet the president mm -hmm. and uh, speak to the president about uh, uh, what's happening in the economy. What, what issues are you going to, would you uh, talk to him about? Oh, lovely. That's a good question. So let me, in fact, let me address the president because I know he watches this uh, uh, program. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So to start with, I would tell the president that um, your excellence, uh, when you are addressing the economic challenges, I would want to go back to the medical doctor's approach. And I want to appeal to the president that um, any policy measure which is going to come to his office, mm -hmm. he must be given a diagnostic report. Medical doctors don't cure anybody until they are satisfied uh, that uh, this is your ailment. So what is our diagnostic report as a country? Our central challenge as a country is, is um, uh, there are three. I would put them in three categories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, as professors and academics at the University of Zimbabwe, both in the business school and also in the economics department, we have this shared view. Yeah. That uh, our three challenges, which I would want him to address as the president, is the first one is corruption. The second one is uh, production. The third one is politics. So I'm going to start by addressing uh, corruption. Uh, on record, um, we are losing 1.8 billion US dollars every year through illicit financial flows. Mm. And um, we also lose, on average, $1 billion locally, domestically. Mm -hmm. uh, because when I say illicit, I'm talking about money exiting our borders. Yes, yes. But then there's also an additional $1 billion mm -hmm. which is being squandered. When you look at Mildred Chiri's report, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you hear about $3 billion, but I'm t I want to talk about $1 billion. Mm -hmm. um, so those two figures, you have $2.8 billion US dollars, which is being wasted through corruption. I, we have no documentation with regards to how much money has been wasted through uh, these are uh, arbitrage opportunities mm. where one takes money from central bank, goes to road port, and change that money, goes back again to the uh, auction system, get the money, goes to road port. That is massive corruption, which is killing production. Mm -hmm. So I would want the president and his team uh, to deal with uh, corruption uh, decisively. And one way to do the corruption, particularly in the foreign currency, is to have one exchange rate. Floating the exchange rate, then no one has got incentives of running around uh, to, to change that money. Mm. In government departments, the parastate house, the ministries, it's a question of implementing what Madam Chiri has recommended uh, so that we don't see continuation of corruption. And we have not seen even parliament holding government to account. Then in terms of illicit financial flows, you need your central bank, you need your security agencies, you need your Zimra to close all those gaps of illicit financial flows. Now, let us assume that we put on table $3 billion on average, yeah. which we have saved from corruption. We can now go to production, to fund production. And um, we don't even need to go even to IMF and World Bank or to cry about sanction for that matter. Because even if we go to IMF and World Bank, they don't give us $3 billion every year. Mm. So we are losing that money. So this money now could then be used properly in production. So for example, if you stop um, the casino economy happening on the auction system, it means bona fide business people and the manufacturers are going to get foreign currents and we're going to be seeing production picking up. The other way of also addressing production is to also take government out of the command agriculture. Remember, I've, took, I've given you evidence of tobacco. It's a very practical model that when government is not in it, it's just providing a regulatory uh, framework. Businesses can then finance through value chains. So we have already tested the model where agriculture can work without government. So let us borrow the agriculture, the commodity um, exchange approach, uh, which has been used elsewhere in the, in the world. Uh, Zambia, South Africa, Malawi, Kenya, they have a commodity exchange. So let the commodity exchange be the vehicle for financing through warehouse receipts, agriculture, mm -hmm. and also marketing of agriculture. And GMB, GMB deals with the strategic reserve Mm -hmm. JMB has no business of being a monopoly in trading of maize. These are the solutions we are providing, and we have shared with economists at the University of Zimbabwe that these are the solutions. I'm dealing with the production right now, right? Then the other way of dealing with the production is to make sure that um, we, ha we, 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 we have the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. and the Governor Central Bank zipping their mouth for at least six months. 
Mm. Yeah. Because what they are doing, whenever they are pronouncing sentiments, they are causing chaos. Check. Everywhere where that they write on paper, they must not write anything. They must not say anything because they are causing chaos. Just this weekend, yeah. they announced what? Importation of goods. Mm. You are causing, causing chaos. How are you going to be productive when you are actually punishing your own industry? For the same policies you have announced as government on suspending lending. So, do you know the governor of Central Bank of Zambia? Mm. Do you know the governor of Central Bank of Malawi? Mm. Nor of Mozambique? Nor even the minister of finance of the same country? But ours is known as far as Somalia, where they talk too much. And when they are talking, they are causing, they are spitting von venom into the economy. So they, if they keep quiet, the industry can sort itself. Let them put the right levers, flood the exchange rate if they, they, they want to continue zim dollar. Mm. If they can't dollarize and go take a big step, mm -hmm. they fine tune the economy from, the, from, 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 from a distance and we have uh, sanity in this economy. And I'm pleading with the president, these two gentlemen must just go on leave as far as talking is concerned, the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Central Bank, and issuing a statement. Would, would you want to see them uh, resign? Or? No, it, that's not my, my, my take. Mm. Uh, my take is that they must zip their mouth. Okay. And that I'm, I'm very clear, because <laughs> whether they resign or they stay there, if they come someone else, uh, who's going to keep on talking with problems? So because zip your mouth. Zip your mouth and uh, not even issue a statement, put a system and leave it to work. Like how the board oversees management. You don't oversee somebody and keep on checking every day and you are, you, you are, you are disturbing how things are working. But I want to talk about uh, the last point, yeah. uh, politics. Politics. Uh, what I want His Excellency to take note of is that uh, we need a unified country with one team called Zimbabwe. Mm. And we don't want to see a situation where government deliberately punishes political elements, particularly the opposition. Because what it must be understood from a quantitative figures point of view is that when we went for election, MDC Alliance, which was led by Nelson Chamisa, had two, over two million people who voted which is a very big representation of the constituents which is supporting the opposition. Now, zanu also had over 2 million people who voted for it. So the biggest political parties in this country is the MDC Alliance. It's, in, and it's now triple C, no? MDC Alliance is gone. It's now triple C, right? And, um, and the, and the zanu -PF. So zanu -PF must never fool itself to say they are going to lead and uh, putting measures to disadvantage the others, whether it's, whether it's campaigning, they are discouraged from campaigning. Whether it's uh, any arrest, they are being arrested for reporting thieves who are getting out at the airport with the gold. What you are doing, you are developing a brand equity, which is very bad. And uh, you have a country which is polarized. So when policy measures are being announced, you don't get the full support off the other side. Hmm. You know South Africa, what I like about South Africa, when they finish their politics, they deal with the government business. Hmm. And even the opposition, they support the government. When you see a flight of South African government minister and the president going to China for business, the business community also chartered their flight to support the president because he is now the president of the country for the next five years. But here we have not disengaged from politics. From 1 August 2018, we began the politics before the results were announced, when people were being shot. And this is very dangerous for the country. Didn't you hear the parliament in UK last two weeks discussing the politics of Zimbabwe? Mm -hmm. And you know where the capital market is? It's London, it's New York, it's Frankfurt, it's Shanghai. So if those markets are not trusting your political environment, you don't get capital. So. The president might not understand this. And I respect him because he is an empowerer and he has, he's a liberator. That's the right way to mm. He's a liberator. He went for the struggle and he risked his life yeah. for democracy. So I want the president to make sure that he's reminded of the work which he had done in the, during the struggle to liberate this country. His systems, his system, his, his government must never do what he's doing, what, what is happening now today. Well, that is creating a toxic environment where people have drawn a, a, a line in the sand. And there's no way his government can lead 
when the other country is divided. So we want a sweet spirit as we go for the election. So there you go, um, unified force uh, for Team Zimbabwe to deal with uh, the challenges that we are facing, challenges economically, politically, and or otherwise.